What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of The Long Dark Hunted Part 2. I found the bear. It took me a little bit of effort. Not too much. I actually found him after about three or four minutes of walking around. Downside is that we have cabin fever right now. I saw him walking around over on this side. So if he hasn't wandered too far, we should be able to put a shot on him. And hopefully that'll migrate him to the next point. Now we have cabin fever. What does that mean? Cabin fever means that we can't sleep indoors for the next 24 hours. That means that we'll probably want to take some steps to make sure that we have a fire supply before we go to sleep tonight. There he is right there. Okay, we're going to approach him from a side direction because the last thing I want to do is put that bear in a situation where he can't get past us. Because if he can't get past us, that could lead to all kinds of shenanigans going wrong. So what I'd prefer to do for right now is we're going to have to get some stuff together so that we have firewood. I think that's a very, very good choice. Aside from that, I don't know if I should start out now. Well, here. Let's go after sticks first. Anything that's easy wood source so that we can make a fire later on. Because we're going to need at least eight hours of fire so that we can sleep outdoors. This eh, cabin fever is a little bit difficult to deal with. It's not the worst malady I've ever had. But it can definitely be a pain if you're not ready for it. All right, Bear. I don't know how I didn't see him back here. I felt like I walked this entire back trail area. Walking the back trail, girl. Sounds like a sexual euphemism. Like, I'm gonna walk that back trail. It's possible, actually, he's already still a little bit scared. So that's good. I think we can make use of that. Let's just stay on his trail. I don't know if he reset back to where he was previously or how that all played out. But we're just gonna stay on him for right now until we run him to the edge of the zone, I hope. So he's right there. He goes this way. And then his trail is somewhat lost until we re-pick it up back here. I followed the wrong thing. Tracking is actually a skill that is difficult to develop in real life. Being able to interpret whether or not a foot is going in one direction or another. So the bear actually just made the turn right there. That's probably a good thing. That's probably something that we can work with. I'm going to go ahead and pick up some sticks then. We'll try to stay on him. I may have to kill a wolf over here. Which is not something that I envy doing. Just because we've got plenty of supplies as far as our food is concerned at the moment. So, I'd prefer to save the bullets for things that actually have earned them. I.e. the bear. The bear is a giant damage soak. And so, unfortunately, until we can put some... Oh, oh I don't have any flares. Okay, well, never mind then. We may have to do it this way. Let me see if I can plot out a little a little gap in between me and him real fast. We should have bear tracks over here too. Indeed we do. I was very much hoping for that. So the presence of bear tracks is going to make our lives a lot, lot easier. If we can just follow these, see where he goes next. He should stop in the lumber camp as far as I know. I think he just does a full circuit of the area and then makes his way back over. Now, the inability to sleep inside is going to be a pain. We're going to have to work with that. I can do small increment sleeping outside if I really, really have to. Making fires is going to be the key to having that function in the way that we really, really want to. But the bear looks like he stopped off over here somewhere. Well, there's my footprints. Where did his footprints go? His footprints, that's not a footprint. It kind of looked like a footprint for a second. It was a footprint in, in disguise. It was a footprint in hiding. I would actually very much prefer to pick up a little bit more wood before we go any further. Just so if we're outdoors, I can get a couple hours of sleep without things going too pear-shaped. We do get like plus 10 degrees from our sleeping bag. So that should be a little bit helpful. I actually wouldn't try sleeping in a sleeping bag on snow. I'm not exactly sure how that would play out personally. It's not something that I would risk. I don't know if we have a waterproof bag or how that whole thing's going to function. My hope would be that yes, we do, but... Yeah, break down the cedar limb. We've got time. The more firewood that I can get put away, the better. I'd prefer to get a fur limb at some point, but, you know, we takes what we can get. Alright, so we're numb. We're at hypothermia risk right now. That's not a good thing. We're a little bit winded. We've got a little bit of thirst going on. We tango a little sad. So what we'll do is we'll drink off some water. 
How is that hunger looking? We're peckish. Peckish isn't bad. I can live with peckish. Let's go ahead and we'll eat a little bit of peanut butter then. We've got plenty of supplies on us for the future. In fact, we should be able to finish off this challenge without any real issue. I think what I'd like to do... Let's get a campfire going. So we're going to put that right there. We have no accelerant, so this is going to be... Difficult. I mean, it's going to be a challenge. So let's see if we can get this thing going. Hopefully we get very, very lucky on one of our first passes. If not, then... We'll just keep on trying. There's no risk that we're going to freeze to death right now. The risk is mostly that we're going to get a little bit too cold. Just got to stay outside for 24 hours, which means hauling around a ton of wood and generally inconveniencing ourselves and taking big risks at getting eaten by wolves. But aside from that, it's not so bad. Oh, I hate it when it fails right here. Please don't fail right here. Hey, we won. Very, very nice. Okay, so sticks first. See how many hours I can get out of there. I'm going to add that. And then... Did I leave my bedroll somewhere? Oh, I must have left my bedroll somewhere. Where did I leave my bedroll? Well, that's trouble. That's big trouble. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do. I've got to recall where I left my bedroll. It's probably inside of... We're winded right now. My estimate would be that it's inside of... Let's go ahead and just pass an hour real fast. We don't have a lot of time to play with, so unfortunately I'm just going to have to live with it. Alright, we're rewarmed back up. Winded is going to be an issue, but I think... I'm like 80% sure that where I would have left it would be inside of... I think I would have left it inside the dam, is what I'm thinking. That's very, very dangerous, by the way. Don't leave a fire burning unattended in the middle of a forest. As you may or may not have known based on your biology studies, forests are made of wood. And forests, being made of wood, are slightly predisposed to a little bit of combustion. I will check those buildings over there just to make sure that I didn't leave it over on this side. Just to make 100% positive, there is our bear right there, I think. Might be a stump, but it might be a bear. I don't know. We'll pick up his trail in just a minute, which is right there. So we'll keep that for future notice. We do actually have the bear's trail in front of us, which is great. Fantastic. All right. So let's run inside here, make sure that the bedroll isn't inside of any of these areas. I think I know it's down in the dam. I think I left it, which sucks, but we'll make do. I mean, there's plenty of reclaimed wood inside of... Yeah, so I'm not in here. Oh, I'm just checking my bases. Like, I know it's probably in the dam. But we don't have enough tiredness at the moment to run back here if it's not inside of the dam. So I'd rather be thorough now and not regret it later. Only one building left to check here before we go back out and try to find this bear one more time. I'm glad I found him with some rapidity, and I'm not sure how I walked past him, like, twice where he was at. I mean, obviously it gave us a decent amount of time to like dick around and do other stuff. What are those right there? Trail boots? I hit all these, right? I was going to say, I can't imagine I've been through here and I didn't hit like everything inside this building. Okay, well, back on the trail again because time is limited and we don't have a whole lot of restful materials. Not a lot of restful materials right now. If we head back down to the road, we should be able to hang a righty. Hang a little bit of a Rachel over here. I don't know. I'm going to call it a hang a Rachel from now on. Doesn't work out well for the Rachel, but it works out well for my euphemism. So, you know, Rachels are going to have to take one for the team right now. I do have some sticks and things. I do have a little bit more firewood. I shouldn't have too many problems. Temperature. Man, I don't want this cedar. I would actually much, 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 much rather have fur. Cedar's only good for starting the fire, whereas fur is good for keeping it going. Unfortunately, you cannot, my dear. We need all of it to make it through the night. There he is. Okay, so we have our bear. What is our encumbrance looking like? A little bit too much. Not too much too much, though. If it was at like 40 or whatever, I'd actually start to worry about our ability to see this thing through to the end. But it's not. We're going to shoot him, and as far as I understand, I think he's probably going to try and zone out because there are no bear dens on this map as far as I know. There's one on Mystery Lake, which I think is the closest one. There's a cave on the transfer zone with the train track as well. 
And then there's also a bear den in all of the zones. I didn't know if I was going to have to put another round on him. He's got me over here feeling nervous. I guess we'll thumb load that real fast and then we'll stay on him. Any twigs we see laying around, definitely going to want to pick those up. Otherwise, tonight is going to get real, real cold and real, real unpleasant. He should. I, my guess is that he's going to Mystery Lake. That would be my best pass at what's going to happen here. I don't see his tracks, and I don't see any blood anywhere either. Yeah, a few more sticks. I can have like 20 or 30 sticks before we spend the night outside tonight. I will feel a lot better about it. And from here, in order to secure our own survival over the long term, I'm just going to focus on getting my ass out. Ooh, and we'll want to watch the tracks right here just to see what he does. See if he does the old loop around or if he makes straight for the mystery lake zone. It looks like he is actually... And just to verify, I'm going to follow these a little further. Yeah, it looks like he's going to zone in over there. So, let's make our way to the dam very quickly. Because tiredness is going to be a problem before too long. I hear definite movement. Let's just watch that way and make sure that accidents don't happen. It'd be a shame to die at this point, wouldn't it? It really would. And unfortunately, all it takes from a bear is one very, very nasty engagement that does not go the way that you intended. And it'll shut your ass down. My guess is that after we get done resting, we'll cut down through that gully right there. We'll take a look. We may be able to see him from the bridge right here if we get really, really lucky. I don't know how far in he ran, but... There's a deer right there. Yeah, we can see him, so he's just chilling over on the lake. Cool. Sounds good to me. Sounds like something I can work with. Let's go find ourselves a little bit more wood, and then we will go back down and see if we can find anything nicey-nice in the bottom of the dam, because I think I left it down at the bottom of the stairs or something like that. Oh, good. There's plenty of firewood around here, too. That's actually really, really relaxing. I didn't think there was going to be much firewood at Cedar, but it'll do. We need like 12 hours of fire, basically. We need to stoke that thing up so it's a bonfire. And then we'll just sleep next to it for the entire night. Ravaged deer carcass, not going to be that helpful right now. We have plenty of food. Our luck is such that like the bad things that happened here, they happened at a time where we could easily weather them due to our thick resources. Our resources are so thick and girthy. So, so thick and girthy. Yeah, I left it on the floor right here. Luckily, I probably did that on purpose now that I'm thinking about it. I may have done that intentionally. Yeah, I've got cabin fever, so obviously that's not going to fly. Let's pick that back up. And with the little bit of time that we have left. Five hours of daylight left. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'll probably pass some time over here after I chop this lumber. And after I play with the wood a little bit, the wood that I've claimed, this is actually technically my wood right now. After I play with my lady wood a little bit. How's the temperature looking? It's at 7 degrees. Okay, break all this stuff down. We're going to have to stay outside tonight, so we don't have a choice. Perfect. Building a snow shelter would probably be a smart idea, too. I think that is an option that we can entertain right now. Requires 15 sticks and 5 cloth. Oh, really? It takes cloth? Huh. I thought that you could just build one. It's made out of snow. It's like building an igloo. Although, I will say, building an igloo is actually quite a bit more complicated than I expected. I watched, actually, a professional survivalist try to build an igloo after being taught professionally, like I Inuit taught him how to do it, basically. Or whoever lives inside igloos. I'm ignorant. I'm sorry. I apologize. But uh, basically, whichever tribe or group is responsible for igloos. They spent like two or three days showing him how to make an igloo. And then he tried to reproduce it, you know, on his own once he was actually in a survival situation. And he had a tremendous amount of trouble getting it going. He actually had a bunch of trouble 
getting the specifics out. He managed to get the walls up, and he managed to get the roof up eventually. But it, it was a bit. It was a bit. Uh, if I had known I was going to... If I had known I was going to need cloth, I would have brought it with me when I came back from some of these alternate locations. I do have time to walk back to the lumber camp if I want to, but it just seems like a waste right now. I mean, if we're going to be stuck out here anyways. I was thinking a spot like this would work well with a windbreak. Uh, this rock wall is not really working as a windbreak. In general, what you would want to do is you would want to figure out which direction the wind is coming from. And you would want to set up the fire. Oh, don't do that. No. Just take it very, very slowly. There aren't any busted ankles right now. That would lead to a tiny bit of heartache, I would think. But yeah, if we can find a spot, so this spot right here is a windbreak. So what you would want to do is you would want to find like a little inlet right here. Like this is actually pretty perfect. And you would set the fire up in front of you, in between you and the spot where you're going to be sleeping. And where you'd be sleeping is long ways along this wall right here. And you'd want to put the fire down like right in this spot. That's how I would do it anyways if I was in this situation. Assuming that I had the actual sundries and things available to make it happen. Drink a couple sodas here just to offset the dry mouth. That will also kill off a small portion of the weight that we are over carrying on. Good. Fantastic. In addition, under the bridge might not be the worst case either as long as it functions as a windbreak. I think I'd be okay with that. Ooh, a cattail stock. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. I like food. That's the first cattail we've seen this entire time. Cattails have been somewhat missing from this playthrough. Get a few more sticks. Gather up some raishi mushrooms. Sure, we can make raishi tea tonight. Probably won't take too many of them. And I don't imagine... Do raishi mushrooms actually survive in the winter? Like when it's this cold out? I don't know. Give me some cattail stalks in here. This is definitely one of those worst case scenario foods, but you gotta do what you gotta do. They give you 100 calories per cattail stalk, so having a stack of 15 to 20 of them has never let me down. When you gotta munch, you gotta munch. All right, and our bear is back that way. Let's find a decent spot for sleeping. Well, looky there. There's already a campfire. I can live with that. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, well, if we've already got a campfire, I'm going to lay down a bedroll like... Well, I can't put the bedroll in the spot that I want, but there we go. Sleeping at an angle is a pain in the ass, too. If you've ever had to do it, I don't have to tell you that. We lucked out that we got this fire striker. We really sincerely did. This fire striker is one of the only reasons we're actually having any luck at all starting a fire. Weirdly enough, the fire striker is better than matches. I would think it would be the opposite, personally, but Come on, hey. Come on, flames. Don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. That fire striker is almost broken, though, so it's not going to stay a valid option for long. Okay. We'll add a whole bunch of sticks, so that's got us three hours right there. We're looking at around 11, 12 hours of fire. Not too bad. I think it's definitely livable. I'm going to cook up some Raishi tea. Because we got time to kill. It probably won't allow us to make it through the night. Especially if we end up with a blizzard. But it'll get us close. And 
if there's more wood around here, I'm actually going to dedicate myself to the task of grabbing that right now. Because if we can spend 45 minutes chopping and get out another couple hours worth of flame, that's going to be a worthwhile choice. Cedar limb. Perfect. Break that down. Gotcha. That's five minutes for an extra 60 or so. There we go. And it looks like we may actually make it through this cabin fever experience. Little complications come up when you're playing this game in an objective-based way that you don't expect. Like, it's actually kind of interesting how when you have an objective, it changes the way you survive. When, when your objective is merely don't die, the game plays very, very differently than when your objective is do this thing while not dying. In some respects, it sort of pushes the don't die mechanic, which is fairly important still, but it pushes it back slightly and puts it at arm's length where you've got to focus on multiple things at the same time, and I like that about it. Cannot add any more fuel to the fire right now. Okay, well, we've got 12 hours, so that's getting us pretty close. What I'd like to do is we'll pass time for a couple of hours. It is possible that we may have run-ins with wildlife. But, if I can keep that to a minimum, that would be great. So we have less than an hour of daylight left. Let's go ahead and take care of all of our problems. So we've got a little bit of beef jerky to be eaten here. Once the beef jerky's done, we will apply ourselves to the water. Which we actually have too much of, so it's good to actually drink off a bit of that. We have a lot of water with us right now. And then we will sleep for 10 hours. And that will take a considerable chunk of our cabin fever off. That's going to be really, really great. We're actually not fully rested right now, which is pretty cool. We've got three hours left in this fire. Hey, add some more sticks because we're, we're probably going to be chilling here for a little bit. I, I doubt that we're going to be moving around much in the near future. Let's go ahead and get ourselves unparched. Sodas tend to be the best way to get that done without wasting the water supply if you also need calories. With the Raishi tea. Hey, 100 calories, whatever. Good enough. I'm going to say we should cook off a little bit more Raishi tea because why... Oh, never mind. It took us a full three in order to do that. All right. Heat output is good. We're looking all right. Fire's staying lit. Less than an hour of darkness left. Well, let's pass some time then. And then we'll sleep for an hour. Let's get rid of some of this nasty morning weather so I don't have to walk around like the minus 25. How cold is it out right now? Minus six. That should even out before it becomes any larger of an issue. So let me get my bedroll back. I'm going to call it a day right here for this episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me for the next episode of The Long Dark. I look forward to survival of Hocating with all of you in the future. Thanks for stopping on in. This is one of my favorite games of all time, and it's always a pleasure and a privilege to get to share it with all of you and add my little insights and whatnot about what I know here and there about survivalism. Fun stuff. See you all next time. Bye, everybody. Take it easy.